in the oscillation problem till now we have discussed uh, the two types of oscillations out of the three first of all we have learnt about the free oscillation with one degree of freedom and after that you have discussed in very detail the damped harmonic oscillation in with one degree of freedom now today we are going to start the concept of uh, forced harmonic oscillation actually uh, the concept of forced harmonic oscillation will be dealt in, in a series of lectures and so this is the first lecture on this forced uh, vibration or you can say forced oscillation okay but before uh, uh, starting to know about the forced oscillation or forced vibration i would like to just uh, give you an insight which uh, we have uh, you have learnt in my previous lectures just uh, a, as a revision what we have learnt and uh, what now we are going to learn and what is the basic difference between these concepts okay so as i have told you that uh, in the problem of oscillation first of all we have learnt about the undamped oscillations or you may call free oscillations and you have seen actually in case of free oscillation with one degree of freedom our oscillator or the system experiences only one force and that is called restoring force which is responsible for the oscillation okay and there is no damping force no resistive force actually this is just a an ideal situation and uh, you have seen uh, that uh, when we talk about the free oscillation then the equation of motion of our oscillator was what we have learnt that this was d2x of t by dt square plus omega square x of t and that equal to 0 okay this was uh, the equation of motion of the differential equation of motion of the free oscillation okay and uh, this was equation of motion okay and uh, when we have solved this differential equation then you have seen that the solution of this very equation was given by x of t equal to a sin omega t plus phi okay where phi is phase constant or initial phase that is phase at zero time and this a is called what this a is called amplitude of the oscillation okay and i hope you have an idea of the quantities used in these equations and you have seen uh, in the discussion of this uh, undamped free oscillation that uh, the energy of the oscillator was given by e equal to half m omega square a square okay so these were the three important results of uh, undamped free oscillations this is uh, the differential equation of motion this is its uh, solution actually this solution also can be written in terms of cosine function or exponential function i have written here in terms of the sine function and uh, the total energy of the oscillator was given by this expression now you know actually the amplitude a of the oscillator in this case remains constant it does not vary with time so i have shown here in this figure you can see when we plot the amplitude of the oscillator a as a function of time then we get simply a straight line parallel to that this time axis because amplitude remains constant okay and similarly you can also see that the total energy of the oscillator also remains constant because there is no dissipative force acting on the oscillator and so that its energy remains constant and that's why when you will plot the total energy of the oscillator as a function of time 
again you get a straight line parallel to the time axis as I have shown in these two figures. So these are the basic features of the undamped free oscillations. What are the important features? First one is amplitude of the oscillation remains constant. Another is total energy of the oscillator remains constant. Since the energy of the oscillator remains constant and its amplitude is also constant. So what physically it means? It means actually whenever once this oscillation gets started, it never stops. It will continue uh, or you can say that the oscillator will continue uh, oscillation for infinite time. Okay? But this is completely an ideal situation because uh, whenever we have an oscillator in practice, definitely there is some dissipative force acting on the oscillator along with the uh, restoring force and uh, this amplitude and energy do not remain constant but actually they decrease exponentially with time. And such situations we have actually seen in case of the free damped harmonic oscillation. When you have discussed the free damped harmonic oscillation with one degree of freedom, then you have seen along with the uh, restoring force, our oscillator also experience a retarding force or a viscous force or you can say a resistive force or damping force. And so that in that condition when we have obtained the differential equation of motion, what was the equation? You have seen the equation of motion was d2x of t by dt square plus 2b dx of t by dt plus omega naught square x of t equal to 0. This was the differential equation of motion of damped harmonic oscillation. And uh, what was its solution? You have seen its solution was x of t equals a naught e to the power minus bt times sine omega t plus phi. This was the solution. Actually here this a naught e to the power minus bt this is actually the amplitude of this oscillation which I have mentioned it here. And B, you know, this is called damping coefficient. Omega naught is the natural frequency of oscillator. Okay. And so you can see this amplitude of oscillation in this case does not remain constant, but it decreases exponentially with time, which I have shown in this first figure. You can see when you will plot the amplitude of oscillation A as a function of time t, you get an exponentially decaying curve or you can say an asymptotically decaying curve. Actually at t equal to 0 amplitude is a naught and when this t tends to infinity the amplitude will tend towards 0. So amplitude in this case decays exponentially with time. And you have also seen in that case that actually the total energy of the oscillator also does not remain constant but it also decays exponentially with time because you have seen that I have already written here the energy of the oscillator E of t is given by E naught times E to the power minus 2 bt okay? or uh, you can also write this expression as E naught E to the power minus t over tau where you know this tau is called relaxation time. This is what? This is relaxation time. You have seen. And uh, this relaxation time tau is given by 1 over 2b. 1 over 2b. Okay? 
and uh, omega is the frequency with which our oscillator oscillates and you can see actually this omega is given by a square root of omega naught square minus b square and so actually this omega is not equal to the natural frequency of the oscillator but it is slightly less than the natural frequency slightly less okay uh, in fact uh, in limiting condition we also take omega almost equal to omega naught but in uh, actual sense you can say that the damped oscillator oscillates with a frequency omega which is slightly smaller than its natural frequency omega naught. So these were the basic features of the damped harmonic oscillation. I, I am just repeating the facts. What, was, uh, what were actually the uh, basic features? First one is amplitude of oscillation in this case decays exponentially with time as you can see in this figure. Similarly, the total energy of the oscillator also does not remain constant but it decreases exponentially with time as you can see in this second figure. Okay? And the frequency of oscillation is slightly less than the natural frequency of the oscillator. Okay? Now you can see since the energy of the oscillator does not remain constant but it, it is decreasing so uh, it is obvious that after a long time the oscillator will lose its, its total energy and when its total energy will be lost what will happen? You can say if total energy of the oscillator will lost there will be no oscillation or in other words you can say oscillation will get stopped. So this oscillation cannot continue for a very long time or forever. Once you start this oscillation, this oscillation will get stopped. Okay. Finally, the amplitude of oscillation becomes zero. So uh, this, uh, these are the basic features of the damped harmonic oscillation and you have already learnt these facts in the, my previous videos in very detail. I am just uh, re uh, giving you a brief uh, <coughs> summary of that fact because that will be needed for our further concept. Okay? Now uh, I am talking about uh, another problem which we, we are going to, uh, to discuss today and that is the uh, problem of forced oscillation. Now let us see uh, if our aim is to continue the oscillation even uh, when the oscillator is oscillating in a resistive medium. Then how we can succeed, how we can do it? As a oscillation in this case gets a stop due to the loss of energy, so it is obvious if from outside by an external agency we supply the same amount of energy to the oscillator that is the, uh, the amount of energy which is lost by the oscillator in a given time. If you supply same amount of energy to the oscillator from outside by an external agency, the oscillator will con maintain its oscillation, then it can maintain. It is just a common sense problem. If you are working for a very long time and you feel hunger, you feel weakness due to loss of energy and uh, there uh, no food stuff, no drink is supplied to you, you can't continue working. But if during your working period, if you get something uh, energetic thing, some food, some drink from outside, you may uh, continue your work. Similarly, as uh, the energy of the oscillator in this case is decreasing, but if we will supply the energy from outside source to the oscillator, then the oscillator may maintain its oscillation for a long time or forever. Okay? So you can say to maintain the undamped oscillation with constant amplitude, an external time dependent force must be applied on the oscillator 
from outside and as our aim is to maintain the oscillation it means the motion of the system is oscillatory so we can not apply any time dependent force but we have to choose a force which will actually harmonically or periodically vary with time so that the motion caused by that very external force will be oscillatory because you know the nature of the motion is governed by the nature of force so you can't apply any time dependent force you must have to apply a time dependent force which will vary exponentially uh, sorry which will vary periodically or harmonically with time so you can uh, consider without uh, <clears throat> any loss of generality that uh, the driving force which will be applied on the oscillator that must be a harmonically varying force okay so a damped oscillator can oscillate for infinite time by applying uh, an external force which is periodically varying with time okay but uh, when an external force is applied on the system how the system actually behaves let us see here uh, this is your system uh, which is vibrating in a, a retarding medium about this equilibrium position o you know on this system two forces are already acting this is fs which is called restoring force this is fr which is called resistive force which is due to the medium and uh, for maintain its oscillation you know we have to apply a time dependent force let us say f of t okay this f of t but uh, when f of t will be applied and you have learned that this f of t must be harmonically varying force it must vary uh, periodically or harmonically with time but how our system gives response to this force actually in the very beginning when the force is applied then our system does not give any response to the applied force it means uh, we have applied the force but our system gets uh, remains unaffected it does not give any response to the force okay but force has been has been applied so due to the applied force the state of the system changes uh, very slowly because uh, uh, the response uh, given to the applied force by the system is negligible actually that very state of the system when it remains unaffected when it does not give any response to the applied force that state of the system is called its transient state okay so i have written it here you can see in the beginning the driven system that is the oscillator has not res, uh, does not respond to the driving force and oscillates with its own, own natural frequency okay and this is called the transient state of our system i think we have understand when you applied the force at t equal to 0 the system does not give any response to the applied force and uh, it uh, remains unaffected by the applied force it oscillates uh, with its own natural frequency okay but uh, as the time passes the oscillator is uh, 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 the oscillator starts responding the applied force and and finally the oscillator is completely in capture of the applied force in it means the oscillator is com oscillator oscillates completely in accordance with the applied force if uh, you can say omega is the frequency of the applied force finally the oscillator oscillates with the frequency omega which is the frequency of the applied force and it's uh, amplitude of oscillation its energy also becomes constant in other words you can say in that very condition 
the state of the system or now does not change but uh, it uh, oscillates just like a free undamped oscillator due to that force even after the presence of damping force our oscillator behaves like a free oscillator due to the applied force because the applied force supplies energy to the oscillator maintain its uh, uh, energy at a constant value and maintain its amplitude of oscillation at a constant value and so the oscillator just behaves finally as a free oscillator actually that very state of the oscillator is called its a steady state okay so i have mentioned it here you can see after a long time the system oscillates with a constant amplitude and frequency equal to the frequency of the applied driving force okay and it is called the steady state of the system okay actually uh, the driven system it means the system or the, or you can say this oscillator extracts energy from the driving system okay there is a driving system which supplies energy to the driven system driven system means oscillator okay but the driven system or the oscillator does not give any energy as a feedback to the driving system so only energy flows from the driving system to the driven system there is no flow of energy from the driven system to the driving system this is your driving system driving system and this driving system actually imparts energy to the driven system driven system means the oscillator which is oscillating okay but uh, uh, in backward direction there is no flow of energy no flow of energy so this energy transport is just a one way process only the driving system gives energy to the driven system and in this way the oscillator uh, maintains its energy uh, the energy which is lost due to the dissipative force that lost is now maintained due to the this driving system and so that the amplitude of oscillation and the energy of the oscillator becomes constant and the oscillator oscillates just like a free oscillator and such an oscillation is called forced harmonic oscillation this is forced harmonic oscillation okay so i think you have definitely clearly understand what uh, this forced oscillation is Uh, what happens in this case okay now uh, we will actually discuss this problem in a, in an analytical way first of all we will find the differential equation of motion of this forced harmonic oscillation and then we will try to solve that very equation okay so in this uh, uh, lecture i am just uh, giving you uh, the concept of uh, uh, deriving the equation of motion of the forced harmonic oscillation and uh, the complete solution of this uh, equation will be not dealt in this uh, lecture but uh, in second lecture just in consequent uh, second lecture we will discuss the full solution of this differential equation so now let us try to find the equation of motion of this forced oscillator okay so i have shown in this figure you can see that there is a particle or there is a system or you can say there is an oscillator oscillating uh, about the equilibrium position o in a in a viscous medium okay and as you know during this oscillation there are two obvious forces acting on the oscillator first one is restoring force the second is the resistive force or the damping force but in this case i have also applied uh, a time dependent force which varies periodically with time on the oscillator so actually in this case there are three forces acting on our oscillator okay 
so actually finding those three forces acting on our oscillator we will be able to find the equation of motion of the oscillator so let us see first one is a restoring force and you have learnt about the uh, about this force from very beginning in the problem of oscillation that this restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement of the oscillator from its equilibrium position okay and it always opposes the displacement it means it this force always tends to decrease the displacement or you can say uh, the tendency of this force is always to bring the oscillator to the equilibrium position and so i have written if x is the displacement of the oscillator at any time t then this re restoring force fs will be proportional to x but i have written minus x why this minus sign you know minus sign is due to the restoring nature of this force because this force has a tendency to decrease x so since fs tends to decrease x so i have put it here minus sign so fs is given by minus k times x where you know k is called force constant or a stiffness constant or a spring constant okay this is a well known result uh, as we have already discussed this so several times okay the another important force acting on our oscillator is due to the medium you know this medium also exerts a dissipative force a damping force or a resistive force on our oscillator and this uh, resistive force is uh, directly proportional to the velocity of the oscillator and it also opposes the velocity when you say velocity that means velocity of the oscillator with respect to the medium this is actually the relative velocity velocity of oscillator with respect to the medium so since x is its displacement at any time t so its velocity will be dx by dt and so that if fr is the resistive force this fr is proportional to minus dx by dt okay now you can write fr equal to minus r times dx by dt where r is resistive constant you know now apart from these two forces our oscillator is also experiencing an external force which is a time dependent harmonic force okay ft and uh, this time dependent force f of t can be taken in this form this is f not times e to the power i omega t you will see later on that this force may be taken as f not sin omega t we can also take it as f not cos omega t but e to the power i omega t you know this is the most general form because e to the power i omega t you know this is cos omega t plus i sin omega t okay so when you write this form for the applied periodic force that will be the most general case so along with the restoring force and the resistive force our oscillator also experiences this time dependent harmonic force given by f not times e to the power i omega t where you know i stands for iota which is actually the square root of minus 1 and this omega is the frequency of the applied force so you can say these are the three forces acting on our oscillator so applying the newton second law of motion now you can write the equation of motion of this oscillator you know according to newton second law of motion mass of the system times its acceleration that is equal to the net force acting on the system okay but acceleration of the system this is given by m uh, dv by dt where v is its velocity okay v is its velocity 
and you know velocity is dx by dt so acceleration will be d2x by dt square so mass times d2x by dt square according to newton's second law of motion that will be equal to f net okay but what is f net f net is simply the sum of the three forces acting on the oscillator and these are fr fs and f of t okay but uh, you have just seen that this uh, fr is equal to minus r dx by dt fs is minus kx and f of t we have considered this is f not e to the power i omega t okay so m times d2x by dt square will be equal to this much okay now let us bring this these two negative terms in rhs in lhs so your equation will become m times d2x by dt square plus r dx by dt plus kx equal to f not times e to the power i omega t okay i omega t <coughs> now actually uh, this equation will ha uh, will have the solution of this equation will have two parts first one is actually called the tra transient term transient term or you can say the complementary function and the second one is called the std state term and or uh, it is also called particular integral so first of all we are going to see the transient state of this system to get the transient solution or the transient term or complementary function okay as i have told you in the beginning that when you apply the time dependent uh, or uh, time varying periodic force on the oscillator in the beginning the oscillator does not give any response to the oscillator to the force and that state is called the transient state so if you want to get the transient state solution of this equation of motion you have to think that this force is not present because force has been applied but our oscillator is not responding it so if you want to get the transient state solution of this equation you must take this uh, uh, applied force equal to zero so i have written it here you can see it is a state of the system when it does not respond to the applied periodic force thus the equation of motion for in transient condition will be free from the applied force and so what will be the equation of motion that will be simply m times d2x by dt square plus r dx by dt plus kx equal to 0 now if you will take m as a common factor or in other words you can say if we divide uh, the this equation both sides by m then what will be our result in first term m will cancel out in the in second term m will be in denominator so the second term will be r by m dx by dt third term will become k by m x equal to 0 okay now as we have learnt earlier we replace this r by m by 2b you can see 2b is written at the place of r by m and this k by m this is replaced by omega naught square this omega naught is actually called the natural frequency of oscillation of the oscillator okay actually you are uh, well known uh, from this equation because you have already discussed in very detail the problem of damped harmonic oscillation and you can see this equation a1 is nothing this is simply the equation of differential equation of motion of damped harmonic oscillation okay and what is its solution how we get its solution all these things we have learned in very detail earlier so here in this problem i am not going to solve this equation again because you have already learned its solution in previous classes 
so i am writing its solution here directly okay and you can remember because you have watched my video on this uh, depth harmonic oscillation previously if you have not watched that video must go through those videos at first and then watch this video okay so let us see you have learned earlier that the solution of this equation is given by x equal to if we consider x is equal to x1 of t why i have written x1 because in this case we will get another solution which is called particular integral okay and this solution is actually called the complementary function this is called complementary function or the transient term okay and the second solution we will get that is called std state term or particular integral and that will be denoted by x of 2 so i have written here x1 of t and you have seen earlier uh, that this solution is given by a not times e to the power minus bt times sin omega prime t plus phi actually here i have not written omega because you know omega is the frequency of the applied force but here omega prime which will be equal to a square root of this omega not square minus b square this is the frequency of our oscillator uh, when uh, it's it is in its transient state okay it it is in transient state so this is its solution and you can see this is this so solution will vanish as uh, this e to the power minus bt will go to zero when t will tend to infinity okay now uh, taking uh, the effect of the applied force that is uh, when you will take this equation of motion that is equation 4 then uh, solving this very equation without taking the applied force zero we will get the particular integral or uh, you can say the std state solution as i have written here here you can see std state solution will be dealt in the next lecture okay so in this lecture you have seen uh, what is the forced oscillation and uh, what is the trans transient state solution of the equation of motion of this forced vibration or you can say what is the complementary function or transient term but uh, the complete solution will be discussed in the next lecture so i will suggest you must watch the second lecture only then your concept will be clear actually after that second lecture we will be able to discuss a very important phenomenon that is called resonance or amplitude resonance okay so i think definitely you have enjoyed this lecture and so keep watching be curious thank you very much